So you've learned how synapses work. Now it's time to understand neuromuscular junctions. So stay tuned because I'm gonna take you through the full process and how to master this element of the exam. So let's take a closer look at neuromuscular junctions. If this video provides value to you, don't forget to drop a like. So what is a neuromuscular junction? Well, to put it simply, it's where a motor neuron meets skeletal muscle. Now, each muscle has a number of neuromuscular junctions along its length, where a group of muscle fibers join a single motor neuron. This is known as a motor unit. And finally, the greater the amount of force required, the greater the number of motor units involved. So really powerful movements like sprinting or squatting or deadlifting are going to recruit many motor units. Now, what happens at the neuromuscular junction then? Well, we have this presynaptic neuron. It has mitochondria within it and synaptic vesicles. We call this the nerve terminal because it's where the nerve terminates. The action potential will arrive at the presynaptic neuron. Voltage gated calcium channels open, allowing calcium ions to enter. Now, vesicles containing acetylcholine will fuse with the presynaptic membrane, so before the synapse, releasing neurotransmitter via exocytosis. And for more information on this process, make sure you watch my synapses video too. Now, acetylcholine diffuses across the synapse and binds to receptors on the muscle fiber, and we can see those displayed here. We have our ACH receptors, which are acetylcholine receptors. Sodium ions, those channels are going to open. Sodium ions will enter the muscle fiber, causing depolarization, which is where the charge goes from minus 70 to plus 30 or 40 millivolts. After this, acetylcholine is then broken down into choline and acetic, aka ethanoic acid, and reabsorbed by the presynaptic neuron. This will allow it to be used at a later date in another synaptic event. Acetylcholine will be reformed inside the presynaptic neuron using ATP. Some extra knowledge on neuromuscular junctions. Firstly, Neuromuscular junctions have receptors called nicotinic cholinergic receptors. The sarcolemma, which is the cell membrane of the muscle, is folded and contains the enzyme acetylcholine esterase. That's the enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown or hydrolysis of acetylcholine. The motor end plate has many receptors. So this is a common exam question. How are cholinergic synapses and neuromuscular junctions different? And this is spelled out in the specification, so you really need to know about it. Well, firstly, a cholinergic synapse is between two neurons, whereas a neuromuscular junction is always from a neuron to a muscle. A second point is that neuromuscular junctions are always excitatory, which means they'll lead to depolarization, whereas cholinergic synapses can be inhibitory too. And an example of that is found in the heart, where acetylcholine synapses are inhibitory. The action potential will be transmitted through the postsynaptic neuron in a cholinergic synapse, whereas the muscle sarcolemma will just be depolarized. Fourth, no summation will occur in the muscle. Remember, summation is where even more than one neuron converges on a single postsynaptic neuron in spatial summation, or the presynaptic neuron leads to more frequent release of neurotransmitter. And finally, some neuromuscular junctions utilize different neurotransmitters, whereas a cholinergic synapse will always involve acetylcholine. So I hope the video provided you some value today, guys. Please like the video if it did, and I will see you in the next one.